Howdy folks, Jake here with Banjo Ben once again. And before you on the table, you see a page capo nestled in the package there very comfortably between uh, some high-end options. Three high, very high, well, wait a second. Let's see here, we've got a McKinney Elliott and we've got a BMF, both well over $100. And then what, what's this one here? Wait a second, that's the same page capo that's in the package. With just a little bit of elbow grease and replacing the tube, we can make it look almost pretty much as nice as these other expensive ones. And you can impress your friends for the low price of less than $20 that way. <laughs> I actually got this idea for this video quite a while back. I had a page capo that was just worn plumb out. Uh, just beat up, nicked up, scratched up. The tube had worn off of it. The original tube, which is what you see here. When I say tube, I mean this rubber piece that goes across the bar. That's what uh, holds the strings down in place. And so, whenever I was replacing the tube, I polished the capo up, and I didn't think much of it. I just thought it looked better. And then when I was out at jams and, and things like that, uh, I get a lot of comments on my capo. Um, you know, from across the room especially, it looks just like a much more expensive capo. And so, you know, people be like, oh man, you got one of those $150 capos. And I'd kind of wink at them and be like, yeah, I did for $15 at the time. <laughs> These sell for, I think, $17.99 now. But what I'm going to show you in this video is how we can take a regular, um, you know, nothing fancy page, just kind of a plain Jane, uh, dull finish one. And with a, just a little bit of elbow grease, we can turn it into a real jewel that will turn some heads from across the room. So stay tuned, that's what we're gonna talk about. Pretty much all you're gonna need is what you see before you. A uh, little bit of uh, metal polish, some 400 grit sandpaper scraps, uh, some of this tubing. You can get this at uh, any hardware store. Kind of take a look at it there. Uh, it comes in a variety of sizes. Uh, best thing to do, depending on what your the capo you're using is, um, they might look at you a little weird, but I've done this several times to just get replacement tubing for, you know, my McKinney Elliott style that I've used for so long. I just take it in with me and find the one that's going to work. So anyway, we'll get started here in just a second. Uh, it also will help. It'll speed the process up, a lot, up, up quite a bit if you have a Dremel. It's got a little polishing wheel on it. Um, but if, if not, you can use Q-tips and even just a rag. Uh, technically, it just take you much longer. So anyway, we're going to get into it here. Okay, so let me show you what I'm thinking, and we're going to see if this pans out. Uh, this particular capo they make in a variety of finishes and types. You know, you can get them for banjo, guitar, which would be the two main ones. And um, the finish I think is going to work best is this nickel plated. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to polish that up to a real nice high shine. So I'm going to set those aside, and I've already got one out of the package here. So I think what we're going to want to do initially is take this uh, rubber piece and it just pulls off of there like that. And we've exposed the bar. Now, I may not show you the uh, detailed process. I'm trying to adjust the, the lighting here so you can see it. As you can see on this side, I've already been polishing. Sorry, I'm trying to film this by myself as I do this. It's a little more difficult. And that, that didn't take but just a few seconds. So um, what we're going to do, take our 400 grit sandpaper, and we're going to work this bar down, especially the front. And what we're doing, like I said, it's kind of kind of dumb, but it's going to give this capo a much higher end appearance. And, uh, you know, if you got a little bit of extra time, like some of us do, and you want to just, you like to tinker with stuff, I think uh, this would be a fun little thing to do. To uh, So you can see we're working that over, and that black is, is polishing off pretty easily already on that bar. So you can just go over the bar. Be careful. Like, I'm supporting it with my finger. I don't want to break it. Uh, these are pretty robust uh, in their design, but I still don't want to snap it or anything like that. So just be careful when you're doing all this. So basically... And uh, I'm going to kind of leave this with you to do while I probably cut and jump to the end and talk about anything that comes up. You're going to take your 400 grit and just work that whole thing over. Every little piece you can reach. 
there's going to be some pieces that'll be harder to reach with the, the sandpaper. And uh, we're going to go over the whole thing with this, but that's where this is also going to come in handy, like uh, around those kind of tighter areas. And uh, especially like down in the joint here of the bar and uh, things like that. So um, I don't think there's going to be any need to disassemble this capo to achieve the result we want. I'm just going to commence to sanding on it and polish on it. And if anything jumps out along the way that you need to know about, I'll make sure to uh, tell you at the end and explain that. And then um, I want to put, you know, put my new tube on it uh, at the end. And we'll see, we'll compare the, uh, the two and, and see if it can be mistaken for a $150 capo, at least from a galloping horse. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, we're back and uh, pretty easily achieved the results we were going for, I think. Um, as you can tell, it's all shiny and nice looking. And uh, with that clear tube replacement on the front, that's kind of what most people see that is kind of a telltale sign for a high-end capo. That along with kind of the, the shiny frame, you know, the high polish frame. And so... It would certainly uh, certainly fool most people at first glance, and uh, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, just took that 400 grit sandpaper, worked the frame over, worked the bar over real real well because we want that to be shiny and see that sheen through the uh, tubing there. And um, one thing I did do after I, I got it all done, or let me back up a little. One thing you want to be careful with when you're taking a Dremel to it, it can get pretty hot. Um, so. I mean, I doubt you would get it so hot that you would jeopardize the integrity of the steel or anything like that because the whole time I, I was going after it pretty hard and I was holding on to it the whole time. It never got so hot that it would burn me or anything like that. But you might want to be careful with that just in case. Um, you know, don't squeeze on it too much. Uh, use a fairly light touch. The Dremel's going to do most of the work. If you are doing it by hand, uh, you just take a rag and some of your metal polish and uh, just takes a little elbow grease, but you can get it there all the same. I had to actually do that on some of the um, the the finer parts where I couldn't get the Dremel in, the harder to reach parts, I should say. So uh, whenever you get it all done, uh, wash it down good, and then I actually took a toothbrush, put a little oil on it, and scrubbed the threads to clean out all the junk, the polish buildup, and everything like that. That also lubricates the threads. If you put a little oil on it, it makes it. Uh, operate real smooth, real easy to turn. So um, overall, pretty happy with the results, uh, just like that one that I did years ago. Uh, looks good, feels good. Um, like I said, I think, uh, oh, one other thing. Um, the I forgot to show the part where I installed the new tube. If you remember, in the beginning, I showed the tube, and it was about two to three times as long as it needs to be. And all, all I did was I, I laid it on the table and I cut one end square, just chopped it with a knife. And then I took the whole tube, keeping it full length, I slid it on the, uh, the, the latch bar, or not the latch bar, but the actual bar here. And uh, once I got it all the way down flush where it would articulate in this hinge like it's supposed to, um, you know, it was sticking out way past up at the top. I just took a uh, pocket knife and I trimmed around that opening. So you can see if I can get this to focus. There you go. You can see the bar there. I just used that as a guide and trimmed around the opening. And then, you know, you make sure it fits. If you have to trim a little more off, you can. But as long as you have that opening all the way clear, you should be in good shape. So anyway, I uh, hope that uh, gives you some enjoyment, gives you a little way, a little bit of uh, fun to do in your free time if you like tinkering with stuff. And I'll uh, leave you with a few uh, side-by-side -side shots of how this looks along some of the, alongside some of the other capos. Maybe even throw it on a guitar there and let you see what it looks like uh, on a guitar. So thanks a bunch. 
All right, folks, to wrap it up, I thought we'd kind of go through a lineup here of all the different capos we offer. The page, which is in the lineup, is the only one that's sub $20. At the time of this video, it's like $17.99. All the rest of them, pictured here, anywhere from $70, $75 to $200. So you can see, like I said at the beginning, our page looks pretty good by comparison, at least from a galloping horse. It's the one right here, by the way. Okay, folks, uh, the last shot I'm going to leave you with here is what they actually look like on the guitar. The first one there on the second fret is the one we just got done working on. That's the Page, sub $20. Uh, the middle one there is a McKinney Elliott, which I paid $150 or $180 for, actually, many, many years ago. Uh, and then we have the BMF, which is about $130 capo. And uh, you can see from the front, you'd be hard-pressed to tell just by looking at it anyway. Um which one is <laughs> one-tenth the cost of, of the other ones almost. <laughs> and then as we come down around here, kind of the same story. Yeah, just pretty good looking. But anyway, like I said, that's uh, this video was just kind of intended for someone who's got a page capo, really likes the looks of the expensive one, but doesn't want to spend the money on it and has way more free time than they know what to do with so i hope you guys can uh take that and have some fun with it that's really what this one's all about just for fun and uh you know you can tease your friends about your really expensive capo that you don't have hardly anything in so <laughs> uh like always folks we appreciate you for watching we'll see you next time